Yeah, so I just wanted to ask, I mean, we, you know, we're not here particularly to talk about Elvis, although we are on the Elvis tour, but um, oh. do you have a favourite Elvis story? Uh, just the one that, that uh, it's, everybody seems to know it. When I first got with him, you know, I, here I'd be sitting there, the Yorkshire was much larger, I just have 35 pieces, two horns, and there, oh yeah, 12 strings minimum, you know, sometimes 18. And uh, he worked very loose, you know. He'd turn around to his guys and say, Bridge Over Trouble Water. And Bridge Over Trouble Water was, in our book, was going to be five tunes later. Now you got to get 35 people to move. So uh, he screwed me up the first night. I mean, it was ridiculous. Uh, so I get off, get off stage, and I think Colonel or Joe Esposito said, What does it feel like to walk with, work with Elvis? I said, it's like following a marble going down concrete steps, boom, bang, bang, and you know, yeah. So I came into work the next day, and I opened my dressing room door, and the door is not opening very well. On the floor of marbles. The sink is full of marbles. My, 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 my suits have marbles in every pocket. And written on the, on the mirror in soap is, follow the marble, EP. Well, he had a good sense of humor. Oh, it, 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 it was, uh, so it, it was, but then I got to a point where uh, I had the stagehands put plywood on the music stands this way and put all the titles instead of being this way in skirmishing so they could see the titles, you know, especially the strings, see the titles. Because you all got one assistant who's going to help you put You know, but I was concerned about the brass players. Uh, but that happened and pretty soon I'd say to the band, he'd start, he'd call something, bring over trouble water or whatever it might be. And I said, man, nobody's going to be far twelve. And suddenly a gigantic workshop came in, and he just turned around and... <laughs> John Spence was a friend of mine. I see. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> John would come to Vegas with Tom, and uh, he'd always hang out at my house with barbecue and whatever, and carry on. <laughs> but you guys, you know, well, you guys, had, you have a good time. And Tom Jones is a phenomenal human. Oh, yeah. He, he was, was very close with us. They were really tight friends, yeah. And Johnny, I love Johnny Spence. His sense of humor was tremendous. We laughed for hours. He never keep up with the drinking, but we laughed. <laughs> So, I mean, I suppose, just to finish off, did you, uh, after this tour, what, what, what are you up to? Are you going to have a rest? Or are you going to take a holiday? Or what's going to be No, 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 no. I'm coming back. I'm coming back uh, to Vienna for two days. Just to talk. Questions and answers about Elvis. Nice. That kind of thing. Uh, and hoping that our honeymoon cottage will be, be built and then we can just move into it. Oh, uh, nice. uh, <laughs> I've got, got, got a deal coming up with Tanya Tucker, she's a country singer in the world, and uh, I produced her a Christmas show with various ones. I do, I do a lot of stage And we're working with one of the best on stage. Yeah, we like the Can't you feel that every minute? Oh, yeah, no, he's There's a no great guy. And again, the Pope, he works with the Pope. Oh, yeah, he did, he did, he did. At the same time, producer Mark Wallace, you know, I you know, work with the guy. Who well, he's an enemy, he's Pope. got two Popes to my one. He's got the new Pope. <laughs> I have video. a Pope. I, had, I shook hands with John Paul I when I was 10 really? years old in uh, St. Peter's Square. Well, let me interview him. How was it when you met the Pope? <laughs> it was amazing. I felt, you know, this really warm feeling. You, you know, my sister and I... You want to hear a Pope, st hear a pope story? Yeah, let's have a Pope story. <laughs> Bibi, myself, and his manager, Sid Seidenberg. Now, what's wrong with this picture? A Baptist, a Jew, and an Italian Catholic. Okay, right? <laughs> We're going to meet the Pope. So, Bibi had a guitar made exactly like the one he has that she calls Lucille. Exactly. To give to the Pope. So we get into we get into the room and when we're introduced and the Pope is talking and he speaks great English. Right? He's talking and then I'm, and BB says, Your Holiness, here's a copy of Blue Seal. The Pope didn't know what it was. I, you can tell, yeah, he looked at it, he picked it up like it, like it was a dead fish. <laughs> he, he picked up the guitar, he thanked him, he put it down, and then they went on to a whole other conversation. 
So as we're working, we're talking out to Sid Seibert says, gee, I hope he understood it, that, you know, I hope he appreciated that we gave him a guitar. He said, what do you think? I said, he'll love it a lot more if we gave him a pipe organ. <laughs> <laughs> A little bandstand here. <laughs> yeah, that's good, that's good. Well, I'd like to thank you, Joe. I have to say that you are fabulous to work with. Thank you. And it's an incredible honor. I think I can speak for all of the strings and horns. Okay. Doing this gig with you and with Elvis and James Burton and Roddy okay. Tart and Glenn Harden. I mean, you know, it makes it vastly to part. You know, we're now a part of history and and the music's so wonderful. Oh, yeah, and I'll tell you, I, I'll tell you, working with uh, Nathan. Well, Nathan East, yes. Well, yeah. I'm going to speak to be speaking to Nathan. Oh, he's just very soon. You know, um, we're going to close this entire thing with a kiss on my cheek, right? Oh, we are, yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I think she's going to kiss on the lips. Really? Well, you're so lucky. Mm -hmm. I'm so lucky I'm not married. <laughs> Thank you. Right? Yes. yes. And that was pretty cool, I thought.